Welcome to Haunted Hospitality, Southern Stories Told by Spooky Genders. I'm Robin. And I'm Zoe. And I have a story for you today. But first, Zoe, how's life? So, I have a very unfortunate announcement to make. Um, if it wasn't, I would avoid doing this if it wasn't for the fact that he's been so integral in our podcast before. Um, but unfortunately, Toes died last week. Mm-hmm. Um, he had, we had only had him for three months. He had a heart defect that he did not show any symptoms of until the day he passed. Um, he was gone within an hour of first showing symptoms. So it was completely unexpected. Um, so it's been a little rough here, but I just wanted to let you guys know because you probably won't hear his jingle. I mean, you won't hear his jingle, and uh, you might notice it, so I just wanted to say, he's gone. Hmm. He was a very good boy. He was. And he had a ball in this apartment. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay. But, so Robin, how is your life? (laughs) Um, I, that my, (laughs) I, uh, my, my life is good. I don't really want to go into my vacation in this episode <laughs> for obvious reasons, but um, yeah, we just wanted to let you guys know that and we will miss him very much. <sighs> but I can go into my life if you want a little bit of a buffer before something spooky. Yeah, sure. Do Why don't okay. you do your something Southern in this episode? Oh, okay. Good yeah. idea. Okay. So, Robin, you have a something Southern for us. Well, I mean, it's like a something that happens to be Southern, but it is kind of spooky. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, if anybody has heard this show, I I love Haunting of Hill House, in case you haven't gotten that yet. Yeah. And I wanted to share, like, a little tidbit, because maybe last summer or something, I just went down a rabbit hole of finding out everything I possibly could about the production and planning of it. Mm -hmm. And one thing I found out is that so, Zoe, Haunting of Hill House, it's obviously a haunted house story, and they had to build the set very specifically on the inside, but they used, uh, they didn't film inside a house, but they used a house for all the outdoor scenes. Okay. The director for Haunting of Hill House, he sent scouts out to find an exterior to use. Okay. And they came back and they were like, you got to go check out this place in Georgia. So they all go down to Georgia obviously and he says they picked out this mansion there because he said the more you walk around it the more off it seemed like he said the architecture of it didn't make sense okay and i just love when there's just something a little off Uh that puts like your little your spidey senses your spidey senses going and i just Love that they used it for Haunting of Hill House, and I love that it was in Georgia. Okay. Yeah, that's my little tidbit. What city of Georgia? I have no idea. Oh, okay. Somewhere not in a city, because part of it is that it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. And you can tell that from the outdoor scenes that happen. I mean, it's not just like a sitcom where, to show you where they are, they'll show you the outside of the place. Mm -hmm. But, you know, scenes happened, little girls who may or may not be ghosts are <laughs> at the edges of the woods of the property. Oh. Yeah. Oh, gosh, it's so good. Guys, we're going to watch this soon for <laughs> our Patreon, and I am pumped. I'm pumped. I'm so excited for you to watch it, Zoe. I, I, if you hate it, I'm going to be so disappointed. <laughs> in me? No, 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 no. Or in general? In general. Okay. I mean, you're entitled to your opinion. Robin says that with a face that very (laughs) much says you are not. (laughs) Okay, yeah, but that's my something spooky. and Slash southern. It's something spooky and southern, which is honestly this podcast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's my southern story told by a spooky story. That's not how it goes. No, no, it's told by a spooky story. Well, it's just, I was, like, trying to get that it was both a southern story and a spooky story. Gotcha. And I'm not necessarily spooky, as we've already covered. I think you are. You played in graveyards as a child. Just a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) So, before we go on to my story today... Yes. Zoe, would you please read a recent review? Yes. We have another five-star review. 
<laughs> I'm just brushing <laughs> off my shoulder. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's fine. So this is left by Nick E E eight nine. Uh, they say title five stars. What a pleasant surprise. The hosts are great. We know, and cover <laughs> all kinds of grounds. Ground. All kinds of ground. They talk about coffee grounds. Yep. They talk about other kinds of Bone grounds. Bone grounds. Ew. Yeah. That's my favorite tea. Made out of blood of my enemies. Anyway, um, I started with the episode on the Axemen of New Orleans and loved it. Whoop. Subscribed and ready to binge. Thank you, Nick E E eighty nine. Yes. I can't wait until we have more for you to binge. Yes. We are stocking up the backlogs, people. We are. I haven't edited a single one of them, but it's okay, because... Wait, I'm sorry. I think we're talking about two completely different things. When I say backlogs, I just mean... General episodes? General episodes. Okay. She's edited those, guys. I have. We... Think about how, like, not polished we sound when you listen to them, and imagine them unedited. (laughs) (laughs) But yes, so, um... Well, thank you, Nick, for that. Thank you, Nick. Positive. E-E-89. Yeah, Nick E E eighty nine. I just wanted to say that name the entire time. <laughs> what does E E stand for? Maybe it's his middle name and his last name. Maybe. And maybe he was born in nineteen eighty nine. Maybe. I think I've cracked the code. I, but what is E E? Nick, let us know. Eric Erickson. Wow. I know. Oh my god. So, can I mention something? Nope, I don't want to bring it up in the podcast yet. Never mind. Okay. Anyway. So, Robin. (laughs) So, are you ready to tell your story? Yes, I am. So, Zoe. Yes. Have you heard of the haunting of Poplar Hill? I honestly thought you were about to say of Hill Manor, and I was about to say, yes, Robin, I have heard of that. You mean Hill House? Sure, that works. Okay, or Bly Manor either or ah that's what happened in my brain that is what happened in your brain yeah um poplar hill that sounds like a tree place so no i don't think i've heard of it okay i didn't think you would have okay not to say anything about you but i don't (laughs) think there wasn't a whole bunch about this okay so i was going through my very professional process Mm -hmm. of finding the next topic to talk about in this show Searching through Reddit for Southern ghost stories. Oh, I see. When the first thing that popped up, a gift from the podcast gods, was a link to a personal essay about a recent haunted house experience in the South from one of my favorite online publications, The Bitter Southerner. Oh. I was like... Oh, my God. Because <laughs> I've been looking for a haunted house. Mm-hmm. And when you search for haunted houses, it's like, oh, you can tour here during Halloween and people will jump out at you. Right. But I'm like, I know that there's haunted house experiences everywhere, but for some reason, I'm just finding it hard to find them. Mm-hmm. Well, I found this one. Okay. Okay. So, that being said, almost all of the haunting accounts in this episode and quite a bit of the history come from... The Bitter Southerner Essay, We Salted Nanny, A Real-Life Southern Ghost Story by Tom Maxwell, who details the nine months he and his family spent at Poplar Hill before they left. And is this like a resort? You're probably about to get into it. but I'm about not- to get into okay. it. Okay. <laughs> nine months is like a long time. They rented it. Okay. They were actually supposed to live there longer. And they got uh, creeped out, and they left. Oh. Oh, is right. Oh. I, so we, I hit the mother load. I found the best source, best everything. Guys, this is a doozy. Okay. okay. I am seat buckling in. She actually put on a, I mean, she didn't have a seat buckle, <laughs> but she was doing the motions for it, guys. But before we get into the hauntings, mm-hmm. let's talk about the history. Because place and time matter. Do, do, do. Thank you. You're welcome. Poplar Hill is a rather large house in Hillsboro, North Carolina. Oh, I thought it was a hill with a lot of poplar trees on it. It was named Pop... It's a house that was named Poplar Hill. Okay. Yes. Now, on the land that Poplar Hill is on, the Okanichi tribe lived there from about 1670 mm-hmm. to about 1722. They first came from Roanoke, Virginia to, like... Come here to be safe. 
right. to live. And then they couldn't do that anymore because people suck and they had to go back to Virginia to be safe and to live. Right. But they did live here for that period of time. And then James Hogg comes into the picture and he was kind of crucial. He was a crucial part of getting this land from Native Americans in a not good way. Okay. Yeah. So James Hogg came from the Scottish Highlands to North Carolina and listeners like me, I'm sure you're wondering, wait, was that the famous Scottish poet James Hogg? The one called the Ettrick Shepherd, James Hogg? The author of The Queen's Wake, James Hogg? Definitely what I was wondering. Yes, and so I asked Google, is that the same James Hogg? And Google was like, absolutely not. There are multiple people named James Hogg who lived during this time period. And I was like, oh, okay. Anyway, which is actually probably a good thing, because I like that James Hogg, (laughs) and I wouldn't like him now. Yeah. Anyway, so James Hogg participated, this James Hogg, this James Hogg. This the James, evil James Hogg. The evil ga- James Hogg. I called him a scoundrel in my notes. Oh. The scoundrel James Hogg came to North Carolina, and he participated in what is called the Treaty of Sycamore Shoals, which was mostly a scam to buy a whole bunch of land from the Native Americans without giving them much in return. hmm For more of this, look at North American history. Woo! Mm, yeah. Anyway, so from this, he got some land... And he built a farm. He built the house Poplar Hill, though it wasn't yet called Poplar Hill. Was it it called Hog House? No, it was not. I don't... I don't know. No. I don't know. Okay. I don't think so. (laughs) Pigsty? No. (laughs) The house stayed in the family from about 1794, when it was first built, to 1891, when it was sold out of the family. Mm -hmm. But the hogs didn't stay the hogs Mm -hmm. james hogg Mm -hmm. was such a scoundrel Mm -hmm. that people did not like the last name and he asked the legislature if he could change his kid's last name before he died to their mother's maiden name which was alves because so many people didn't like him (laughs) the legislature was like yeah people don't like you you can change your kid's last name to alves okay so now there are the alves living there so they went from hog to owls. Got it. A L V E S <laughs> owls. So they're going through their lives. Um, I don't know if James Hogg is alive at this next portion of the story, but it features his granddaughter who was 12 years old. There was a family gathering happening at Poplar Hill, and there was a guy there named William Hooper, who was a friend of the family and a young man who would later become a professor. And he was talking with a group of kids who were there and he saw two pistols up on display and he was like ah i'm gonna play with these kids i'm gonna tease these kids about these guns which i definitely think are unloaded he takes them down why why i don't know exactly what he does but he i guess he plays with the guns or something they are not unloaded and he ends up killing mary he shoots her in the chest oh my gosh yeah why would you play with guns? I don't I don't know. I don't know if they have right. the level of gun safety. <laughs> anyway, she ends up dying. She is buried in I think it's Old Town Cemetery in Hillsboro. Okay. And to this guy's dying day, he had so much regret and guilt over that. Uh, yeah, good. Yeah. Which is definitely justified and you should feel guilty about it and honestly probably should have gone to like Prison. I Probably. Mean, with current laws, I think that would count as manslaughter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that is, I guess I would call that probably the biggest tragedy that happened there. Okay. I mean, there were definitely other things that happened, but I would say that's just, you know, accidentally shooting a 12-year-old is the worst thing that happened there. Okay. And after that, not immediately after that incident, but in 1891... It was sold from the Alves family to Julian S. Carr, who bought it. And Julian Carr is not a good guy. Yay! Yep. He is a white supremacist. Oh, God. Who used to be a Confederate soldier. Oh, fun. Yep. So this part takes place probably about 25 or so years after the um, Civil War ends. Okay. But people aren't good at letting go of things. Right. Yeah. So just to give you a hint about this guy's personality, he once bragged... Like, while giving a speech, he bragged about whipping a black woman in front of about 100 soldiers. Yeah. Wow. Yes. 
he wore a Confederate general's uniform when he got to be, like, an old man. Mm -hmm. Just, like, he wore it around. That was what he wore. Because he couldn't let go. Because he couldn't let go. And so he had a wife named Nanny. Okay. And she was the one who gave Poplar Hill its name. And they left probably the biggest mark of all on the house because they had it remodeled while they owned it. Owned it. Okay. And they had it remodeled to look like a traditional southern plantation home. So you got the columns on the porch. Yeah. You got these big windows. And this was all about in a part of the period of time, which kind of still continues today, which is all about romanticizing the antebellum South, the South before the Civil War, the South before slavery was ended. Right. And for people who are not in the South, whenever you hear anybody talking about the Old South or saying the South is will rise again, this is what they're talking about. Right. This is still an issue that comes up again and again and again. Whenever you see, like, Confederate rallies, which happen. Unfortunately. Yes. It's just passing on like this myth of like that was such a good time we want to Mm -hmm. go back to that time yeah you know so fun facts about the south yay yeah yeah (laughs) so julian died in 1924 but not before a tornado came in and destroyed a lot of the farm that surrounded poplar hill and that economically supported the house Mm -hmm. And so they really needed to sell off a lot of land. And they were only able to do it about at the same time that he died when they cut it up into a lot of pieces for private homes. Mm -hmm. Um, Poplar Hill, I'm not sure. It might have stayed in the family. It might have been sold off. It stayed a house, but the people who lived there were not as well off as they used to be. And it happened so, like, they would end up only living in one or two rooms of this big, big house just because, like, that's the area they could heat up with firewood in the winter without spending so much money and so many resources on it. Right. So life there kind of degraded and didn't stay what it used to be. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing they didn't, like, fix it up as things fell apart and so it started kind of falling apart. Yeah, exactly. So in 1980, a guy named James Freeland bought Poplar Inn It's not an inn. No. House. (laughs) (laughs) He bought Poplar Hill and he moved it across the Eno River, which it bordered one side of it. So he's just kind of making it cross the river. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait, I'm sorry. He moved the house? And yes, uh, there is a photo of this big lumbering haunted house being moved via a truck down the road. It It is quite an interesting photo. You know, construction usually awakens ghosts. I feel like moving moving the entire house house would really waken some ghosts. I think things were awakened. Uh, (laughs) He he moved the house, and it's because he had an idea for a business. Of house movings? Of things he wanted, of something he wanted to do with the house. A business he wanted to be in the house. Uh Uh-huh. Zoe, I would like you to just take a wild guess about what that business is. I don't... Do I, is it is it something racist? I'm going to say yes. What is it? It's the Okanichi Steakhouse. So named after the Native American tribe that was forced driven there. In, yeah. And then forced out. Yes. That is A steakhouse. That's so sensitive of him, like so sensitive. It was so sensitive of him sarcasm sarcasm (laughs) is laying down thick (laughs) yeah so um why did he have to move the house to do this i don't know zoning maybe he thought it'd be like more people on the other side of the river i don't know all i know is the house was moved and then people were like um we're gonna vote no we don't want you to do this okay so it didn't actually happen it didn't actually happen oh good it did not become the okanichi steakhouse okay yeah but in that same Okay, okay, so it's moved from one location. Yes. To another location. Yes. If you've watched the John Mulaney special, it is now in a secondary location. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know you don't come back from the secondary location. You do not come back from the secondary location. 
And it didn't. It did I mean, not. it's still in the secondary location. Okay. And this location is, I'm going to say, more haunted, probably, just because of what happened there specifically. Archaeologists came by in the 1980s. Okay. To the area that is now around the house, and they found remains of the Okanichi village, including on or right near the property, a cemetery. Is that where it currently is or where it was? Where it currently is. They moved it to this location. This is the secondary location. Um, so, you know, they uncovered the bodies. Many of them show signs of having violent deaths. Mm-hmm. And most of them, they, like, left in the ground, but they did take some of them for research purposes. The archaeologists? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, they've now disturbed the gravesite. Yeah. <laughs> right by the house. Ah. Another group of sensitive people. Another group of sensitive people. Mm-hmm. The house is now sometimes lived in, sometimes not, because people don't stay there long because it's very cold. It is a very cold house. Now, that could have been because it had to be taken partially apart to be lumbered across the, the <laughs> river and put back together, and probably it was put back together poorly. Probably. I'm also going to say this. Ghosts. Ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, because as everyone knows, ghosts cause cold spots. Yes. Mm-hmm. But in this case, the house is just one huge freaking co- cold, cold spot. spot. Especially in the upstairs. Ooh. Ooh. And you'd think it'd be the opposite because heat rises. I have never found that to be true. Oh. Everybody keeps saying heat rises. I don't think it rises enough to make a difference in a house. Okay, so you've heard it here first. Robin disagrees with science. Next thing you know, she's going <laughs> to no, talk about saying... how we are a flat earth. And... <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, okay, I'm, listen. Okay, to clarify, I think heat rises. I just don't know if it rises enough to, if you're cold, go upstairs. I see. Basements are significantly colder. However, that's probably are underground. Has, yeah, that has something to do with it being underground, probably. You're in the dirt. You're buried alive. Oh, you are buried alive. Think about that. Everybody just think about it for a moment. My room used to be in the basement. You were buried alive. Cool. I'm going to hang out in a basement this coming weekend, actually. Just just a random one? <laughs> no, not a, I mean, I know this basement. You know it personally? Yes. I've hung out in it before. I'm visiting some family and I'm going to be in the basement. <laughs> You're best friends with the basement. I do enjoy the basement, yes. It has a ping pong table. All right. Anyway, let's get back to the Native American ghosts. Um, okay, well, that part's, the history's done. We okay. are up to modern day. Well, we're up to 2014. Okay. And now we get into the hauntings. do 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 Oh, well, what's that what? like? <laughs> what's that like gasp that happens at the, the beginning? <gasps> but it's like we could never recreate because it's techno. Yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, cool. That. <sighs> oh, gross, guys! Her <laughs> tongue came out of her mouth. <laughs> okay, hauntings. Yes. This is serious business. Very Zoe. serious. So Tom and Brooke. Oh. Uh-huh. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom and Brooke. Tom and Brooke moved into Poplar Hill without knowing its backstory. And Tom is the bitter southerner? He is the person who wrote the essay, yes. Okay. The only thing they knew about the house, really, was that one of its former owners had been named Nanny. So they didn't call the house Poplar Hill, they called it Nanny, which I think is so creepy. Okay. I would never name a house Nanny. That reminds me of those, like, futuristic sci-fi movies where the house takes over and starts trying to kill you, you know? Oh, like Smart House on Disney? Yeah. Oh, I loved that movie. I think I saw... There's an episode of Eureka. (gasps) You know Eureka? I love Eureka. I know Eureka. Oh, my God. My favorite episode is the the one where they had to listen to whatever the music said, and then Joe was listening to music, and it said, I shot the sheriff. Oh, yeah. And so she had to, like, go and shoot him, so he was running away to be <laughs> at the edge of the vortex. Yeah. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so Tom and Brooke had lived in a house in nearby Chapel Hill, and they'd gone on a vacation recently that summer. And um, the thing is, when they were living in the Chapel Hill house, they had headaches all the time. And then when they went on vacation, they didn't have headaches. Mm. And it was one of those, oh, we have mold. 
this is dangerous. Right. We need to leave. So they think they left, and so they were looking for a place to move into rather quickly. And they found an ad for Poplar Hill. Okay. And they went in and toured it, and they were really pleasantly surprised about it because it's a very big house. And there was a family living there when they went in. And, you know, it must have been a pretty big family because there was, like, they said the grandparents were living in the dining room. It, they had made it into a makeshift bedroom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and all the kids, there was, like, a whole bunch of kids. And the kids were, like, running around them as they went on this tour. And they were like, that's my room, that's my room, that's my room. And I would love to pull out a thing that was, like, and the family didn't exist at all. But, no, they, they were <laughs> they real. Were there. That was fine. And so they moved in September 2014, and everything was pretty fine that first month. They did get a little disillusioned about the house Mm -hmm. because it's just kind of the same thing when you move into an old house. Maybe you have, like, your little rose-tinted glasses at the beginning because it it was a really good deal for a huge house. I can imagine. Yeah, because it's haunted. (laughs) (laughs) And then you know when you're living in a space you realize it's quirks and older places have a lot of quirks Mm -hmm. but other than that everything was fine until brooke's mother visited them the next month in october now brooke's mother slept in one of the upstairs bedrooms because they were many and this one used to have an adjoining archway to the room next to it but that had since somewhere in the remodeling been filled in with a wall at night she would hear knocking in sets of threes and again so is the ghost of sheldon from big bang theory oh yeah i guess so (laughs) uh i guess so yeah and then one day brooke was walking outside with her mother because her mother didn't immediately leave when that knocking (laughs) happened like i would have well actually i don't know if i would have left then Mm -hmm. i don't think i would have stayed in that room though i would have had the light on no, I think I would have been like, um, can I sleep with somebody else? <laughs> I knew they were outside, and Brooke saw something out of the corner of her eye. Mm-hmm. And so she swiveled her head to look at it, and it was a woman under a tree. She had her hand on the trunk. She had on a white bonnet and a long dress, and she was looking straight at Brooke. Oh. And then she disappeared. <gasps> Thank you for that dramatic sound effect. You're welcome. Now, they started noticing that with these outside sightings, that they were happening in two categories. If it looked humanish, it was residual. Okay. And we know that that means you're doing these tasks over and over and over again. You don't necessarily notice the people around you. I'm going to say this excludes uh, that woman who stared at her. Because... If I'm staring at you, I know you're there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Unless it's a moment, it's a fold in time where the two times are connecting. And so she just saw some weird modern ghosts hanging around, but in whatever year. Ooh, I would love that. Yeah. Here's a few things that they saw that were residual energy. Okay. The daughter saw a woman. Now this looks like the woman who saw Brooke. Okay. So this may have been her again but somehow residual instead of intelligent i'm not sure but she would walk often from the side of the house to the front porch okay like she would just do that a lot and then there was a guy who was seen by both tom and brooke at separate times and they saw him hurrying to the shed in the yard and okay this man was dressed in leather but like not biker leather but like old timey we're wearing leather because that's what clothes are made of gotcha okay i don't know what was in the shed but he had to get there in a hurry okay and then and this is a really weird one to picture brooke saw one guy once walking up a set of stairs outside Mm -hmm. except there were no stairs (laughs) and he was walking into the air that's funny it is and i'm like what (laughs) i just can't imagine that now in terms of things that are not quite human or not human period okay it was november it was at night tom was getting firewood because it's a cold house Mm -hmm. and he so he's bending over he's picking up firewood he stands up 
He turns toward the house and starting out of the corner of his eye, but moving into the center of his vision is a floating five foot tall shadow. Oh, again, you're thinking, Robin, this is at night. There's a whole bunch of shadows at night. People can get their eyes tricked. Uh huh. To you, gentle listener, I agree, but not about this specifically. Okay. The moon was full. The porch okay. light was on. Okay. He saw the shadow in the light. Ooh. Ooh. When you say it was floating, but it was five feet tall? Like it started a bit above the ground and was a tall shadow. A five, five foot tall not, shadow. Okay. It was, okay, I'm sorry. It was a five foot tall shadow. It's not, I'm not okay. judging it by human standards. If I right. saw a five foot tall shadow, I'd be like, that's a tall shadow to be cast by nothing. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> and it makes was sense. floating in the air and it was going around the house. Because they noticed when it was things outside that didn't look human, it moved counterclockwise around the house. Fun. Yes. So he sees it. He registers it. He goes inside, he locks the door, and <laughs> sometimes, that, no, well, actually he said he cursed, um, but sometime that night, he thinks to himself, because he could see the path it was on, mm-hmm. and he realizes, um, when I was bent over getting firewood, it must have been right behind me. Ooh. Creepy, creepy, creepy. It's like those movie, that scene in the movie where you're facing the protagonist and you can see it behind them, but they have no idea. So you mean the woman in black when she turns immediately at <laughs> the camera? Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. a good one. I actually talked to someone about woman in black recently. Me? They ag- yes, but somebody <laughs> even more recently. They agreed it was also creepy. Uh, and they also agreed that Daniel Radcliffe was hot as all get out. Okay, moving on. Sorry. I can't talk about that too much because i'll get distracted okay next thing they saw that was outside Mm -hmm. and then i'm gonna get into some inside stuff in a bit okay Okay. brooke and tom were out with the dog the dog was going to use the restroom it was at night so it's like okay hurry up we got to go back in and then all of a sudden the dog is like i want to go to the shed and the trees by the shed and it pulls Brooke because Brooke's holding the other end of the leash. Okay. And so she goes out of there and something comes out of the trees. <sighs> it doesn't have a head. Oh! Its legs are like curled over and out. And it's got these weird long arms that it's like flapping. What? I can't, I can, I mean, I can picture it in my head. I just have no idea what it would actually look like. But it was doing this. Brooke saw it. And is it, like, a shadow figure, or? I don't think so. Because, I mean, it came out, it was dark, it came out of the shadows. It, they don't mention it being a shadow figure. Okay. And then it just went back into the trees. Uh, oh. And when they saw this, they were like, okay, two things. One, I don't think we're being attacked by these things, and we're talking about the outside specifically. hmm But they are announcing that they're here. hmm And that they're going to just be here. Mm -hmm. regardless of whether we are here or not. Okay? Okay. Now, before I take us into the inside, I do want to mention something that Brooke heard every now and then. Mm Mm-hmm. Because there were voices (laughs) calling her name. No. And this happens a lot. But the story of it happening outside... Uh-huh. Is that somebody called her name. She looked around. She didn't see anybody. Mm-hmm. They called her name again. But mm-hmm. Zoe. This She's... time, they were closer. <gasps> no. And no. still, she couldn't see anybody. Oh, I just got goosebumps. No, thank you. I would say... I'm sorry. She, Zoe just looked immediately <laughs> off to the side, and I was like, what do you see? <laughs> I saw the shiny bit of this. Oh, okay. And I thought, and it moved, but it was because I was moving, and I have the heebie-jeebies. So got, okay, just, got yeah. the heebie I was so happy I gave you the heebie-jeebies. Also, your bathroom door is open and dark. Um, sorry, I notice all the open, dark places when I'm scared. So, if I were them, I'd, one, I'd be gone. Yeah. Break the lease. Get out of there. Mm-hmm. And just so you know, these are things that happened when, like, in their first few months there. Wow. These aren't even things that made them leave. If I were them, from just learning the outside stuff, I'd be like, okay, I'm just not going to go outside ever. Yeah. But trust me, when you hear what's inside, you want to go outside. Oh. 
we're going to the inside of the house now. <laughs> okay, here, here's something. It's easy. It's simple. So you can handle it. Okay. Like a little white ethereal orb steam orb is probably a good word for it it kind of formed into an orb would come from the floor and just like move around the living room it would just hang out hey that seems fine yeah 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 um some other things that were a little bit odd is that they would hear a car coming up the driveway they would hear the crunch of the gravel they would see headlights there would be no car that's great. That's awesome. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. One time, Tom heard the car, and then he heard the door to the mudroom open and shut, and he thought Brooke had come home, so he went to say hi, and nobody was there, and the door to the mudroom was locked. That's even better. Uh-huh. Everything is going great. Uh-huh. Back to voices. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it was almost always... Female voices. There is one instance of men voices. But the female voices would, from the inside, call for Brooke and also their daughter, also Tom's daughter. Now, I don't know how old Tom's daughter is, and this happened only about seven years ago. So just in case, like, you know, she's still a minor, I'm not actually going to call her name. So if you hear me repeat uh, his daughter a lot, just know. Can we call her Sophie? Sure. Okay. Sure. Sophie. Sophie. So I really like that name. Oh, okay, cool. I know a Sophie. She's cool. I think you would like her. Um, anyway, <laughs> th- they would hear from the inside a woman mm-hmm. calling out Brooke and Sophie's name. Okay. Which is similar to outside because it was a woman calling her there too. So it knows them enough to call them. Now, here's the thing. There's an upstairs and a downstairs. Remember the McDonald's situation when you were like, oh, yeah, they went upstairs. And I was like, Zoe, there's one floor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this has two floors, so they okay. can't go upstairs. <laughs> and so whenever Brooke or Sophie individually would be upstairs, mm-hmm. they would hear their name being called downstairs. Oh, no. And they would go and be like, okay, what's up? <laughs> and nobody would be downstairs. And the same thing is when they were downstairs, it would be called upstairs. And so they would go and be like, okay, what's up? So this thing is toying with them Mm -hmm. or at least it's making them move and it's like maybe it's almost a power grab thing that's me kind of speculating okay now here's a creepy thing okay if that wasn't creepy one time it imitated sophie's voice and called out for brooke oh no so brooke was upstairs she heard sophie calling her downstairs and so she went to see nobody was there and so well now she's looking for sophie Right. She goes back upstairs, sees Sophie, who was upstairs the whole time. Oh, It's like, no. you know, did you call me? And Sophie says, no, I didn't. Oh. So it, now it knows them enough to mimic their voices. That's awesome. That's just fantabulous. This is great. This is a great this is situation awesome. to be in. Uh-huh. I'm so jealous. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, like I said, it wasn't just women voices, even though it was primarily that. But here's a bit of a different situation. From the upstairs, they would hear men talking downstairs. Then they would be talking quietly. Mm-hmm. And as if what they were talking about was secret. Okay. Because you would come down the stairs, and when they heard you on the first floor... They'd stop talking. They would stop talking. Oh. Mm-hmm. <sighs> They're like, no, you can't hear what we're saying. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you filthy that. eavesdropper. <laughs> Get out my house. <laughs> but, like, secretly. Now... Things are starting to get worse. It's been a few months we've been here. One time, Tom, Brooke, and Sophie were all hanging out in the living room. Mm -hmm. And there's multiple entrances to this house, including a side entrance that I think that they could see the door from there. And it was locked in multiple ways, you know, probably like a chain situation. And they were all sitting there when suddenly it was like something was trying to open the door. Oh. It said, like, the locks were shaking Oh, wow. Something was coming out. They could hear it. They could see it. And they just all sat there as it tried to come in. Yeah, what else can you do except for grab the rock salt, you know? (laughs) Grabbing the rock salt. Yeah. After that, they started to feel like something in the house was trying to separate them. Mm Mm-hmm. Drawing them away from being into a unit, into their own individual spaces, because anybody who's seen a horror movie knows that is when you are more vulnerable. Right. And so I kind of, part of me thinks that might be part of 
why they were always calling from a different part of the house. Mm-hmm. No, you're not going up there. You're coming toward me. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I'm sorry. Chills, 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 chills. I uh, <laughs> slept with the light on last night in case you can't tell <laughs> <laughs> after researching this. So I want to talk to you about something that was showing up at night to Brooke. And they even mentioned, they say, you know, this could be sleep paralysis. We're not sure. Right. I think it's very possible with sleep paralysis. And if this was like an isolated incident of somebody being like, one time this happened to me and nothing's ever really happened to me other than this, I'd be like, I think you're talking about sleep paralysis. In this house, I can't say for sure. Right. Brooke would wake up in the middle of the night. They had a fireplace in their room. She would see something come out of the fireplace. And the description to me, sounds like the description of what came out of the trees. Except it's a little bit different. It's not headless, but it has a hood on. But it has red glowing eyes. Oh, no. But it still has those arms. (laughs) (laughs) You just do this, like, flap. I just imagine them doing the wavy thing. And it would come to her. Mm -hmm. And they said that, like, you know, she would not be able to move. And then when she screamed, it would leave. Okay. Because, like, I guess it takes a while for the body to wake up. So that's a point towards sleep paralysis. However, I subscribe to the theory that sleep paralysis, when you're in that zone, um, it, you are actually seeing things that are actually there. Because you're in the in-between zone of sleep, and that's, you know, when the veil is thin. So, um, I've previously talked about my experiences with sleep paralysis. Do you think that I was seeing things? Maybe. Okay. I think... I don't... I'm not... I'm... I'm sorry, I'm covering my hands with, I'm covering my mouth with my hands um, because it scares me to think that I might have seen something. Right. Because I like science and I like not (laughs) seeing creepy things when I'm sleeping. Well, I mean, but in this house. In this house? Anything. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. In Nanny slash Poplar Hill. Yeah. (sighs) Okay. So she sees this guy. I'm assuming with having, like, all this come up again and again, like, it is probably wearing on them. Yeah. It would wear on me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wouldn't because I'd be gone. But, (laughs) (laughs) I mean, this would be, like, scarring to me. Right. Some people can handle things more than I can. But there was this guy. Most of the haunting, I think, is from women. Not all of it, though. And there's this guy, and I can't figure out if he's human or not. Okay. And... He was down, he would be downstairs and he would start out at the corner of your vision. He had, he was very tall mm-hmm. and so thin. He was like flat, almost flat. So flat Stanley. I don't know what that is. It's a children's book. Oh, creepy. And he would be smiling this wide grin at you. <sighs> I know, I hate that. Don't smile at me. <laughs> so we stop. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd be in your corner of your vision and when you turned to look at him, he'd look at you, still smiling. He would back up into the wall, and he would disappear. See, I hate stories of people seeing things out of the corner of their eyes, because I have very poor peripheral vision. Like, they say, like, do the thing where, like, your fingers stop when you can see your fingers. Mm-hmm. That's not too bad, Zoe. Yeah, but I can, like, barely see them. If they're, like, in focus, it's, like, here. Okay. I mean, I kind of know they're there. Yeah. Gotcha. So, hey, you have bad peripheral vision. I have bad peripheral vision. So, I'm just like, what if they think I can see them out of the peripheral? And, and you can't. And, it's and just, I can't. It's just and so, like, they're just, like, sitting there doing the chicken dance. And I'm just like, do, 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 do. And they're haunting me. And I just won't ever know it. And that almost is worse. Um, I think I would much rather be haunted and not know it than to be haunted. <sighs> Though I, I think ultimately I would rather not think that be I'm haunted. haunted. <laughs> no, I mean, well, yes, obviously. But I'm saying I think I would rather, if I had to choose between thinking that I'm haunted and not being haunted versus thinking that I'm not haunted and actually being haunted. Mm-hmm. Actually, I don't know. Because I'm kind of an ignorance is bliss person <laughs> in some situations. So I think I would actually rather not know. But what if it, like, becomes dangerous, you know? Obviously. Okay, if it becomes dangerous, yes. But if it's just, like, a, a ghost is hanging out in my house, uh huh, I'd be like, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be okay. But <laughs> if I didn't know about it, I'd be fine. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. And if you think you're haunted but you're not, you kind of become, like, the crazy person, you know? Yeah. There was – I moved into this one apartment and – 
Um, I'd been told through the grapevine that a girl had died in that apartment. Mm. You visited me in this apartment, by the way. Campus or off campus? Off campus. Okay. Yeah. And um, so I was like in there the first couple of nights being like, okay, is it haunted? And I don't actually think it was. Okay. There was one time, I think I remember something, but it was like three or maybe not 3 a.m., but like it was in the wee hours and I was tired and it could have totally... I don't even remember being scared. I just remember being like, okay. <laughs> so I think probably that was just me waking up or going to sleep or something weird. Right. Yeah. Anyway, little tangent over. Back to the women who haunt the place. Yes. That's honestly the coolest thing. I mean, it's terrifying. So Sophie, one time, they were like in the house. She was with Brooke and Tom. And from the door to the kitchen, she sees a head. And... It is a head that's, like, you know, attached to a body probably. But it is looking around the door frame Ooh. at her. And it is smiling. And she's a woman. She has gray hair. But the head isn't where a, a, a normal woman's height would mean for it to be. It was, like, at the top of the door. Oh. around. Like, tall. Yeah. Very tall. Or floating. Or floating, but I kind of feel like it was attached to something. Okay. Well, I mean, like, the body could have been flo- floating, to- too. Yes. Okay, I guess there's multiple reasons than a very tall woman. Yeah. So, I think at this point they're starting to get upset at the ghosts. So, Sophie's <laughs> like, uh-uh, get out of here. So, she <laughs> follows the ghost who disappears because it's like a blink and you- – not exactly a blink and you miss it, but, like, she's there and then she leaves. So, Sophie follows her into the kitchen, but – Again, nobody's in the kitchen. Ooh. But because she was tied to the kitchen, the family thinks, oh, this is the ghost that probably is in the kitchen with us. Because, and this is creepy as all get out. When they would go to open the fridge door, they would open the fridge door, they'd be looking in the fridge, they would hear something approach them from behind and then feel it behind them. Mm-hmm. Like looking down, looking over their shoulder. Mm-hmm. And they're like, ah, oh, that's probably the, the lady who does that. Mm-hmm. And then one time, I think they got really fed up with the ghost in the kitchen, and they yelled at it. Ooh. And then, I don't know why a shampoo bottle was in the kitchen, but it said that a shampoo bottle flew across the room. Oh, wow. Maybe they had just gone grocery shopping. And then maybe they were like, well, I'm sorry, I have to open up the kitchen. I have to open up the fridge a lot to put a lot of things in. So, like... Back you- off. Back off. Let me do my thing. Right. Anyway, the ghost did not like being told off. And after this, I am O. Which means, in my opinion, okay, it gets a little more, um, how you say, how do you say, uh, aggressive. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it gets more aggressive. So one time, uh, Sophie had a friend over for a sleepover, and did not tell the friend that the house was haunted, which yeah. I get, cause like you want to have friends, right? You want them to come over, right? They're not going to come over if you tell them that's creepy. Well, actually, some would. (laughs) Some would. Um, I don't know if this friend would be one of them. She didn't get a choice. Okay. So Tom was downstairs getting popcorn for the girls. And the girls were upstairs in Sophie's room. And then they just heard the door handle shaking. And they saw it again, shaking. Mm -hmm. And whatever was shaking, it didn't come in. But... Then they heard the door to the master bedroom open. Mm. Brooke was showering. Okay. She thought that it was Tom who had come in. Okay. So when she gets out of the shower, she's expecting to see him, but she doesn't. But she does see, in the reflection of the mirror, like the tail end of a long skirt and a woman's bare feet walking away. Fun. Fun. And remember how I said they're kind of getting tired of these ghosts? Yeah. She and her towel runs after him. It's like, what's up? They don't see it. It kind of, it like kind of disappeared after that. But she runs after it. And I think maybe the ghost didn't like that. Now, again, I think there's multiple women ghosts here. I don't know what's, what, or what's even pretending to be Mm -hmm. a woman. But that night, Sophie's friend, who I'm sure by this point realizes it's haunted because it caused a commotion when Brooke saw the thing from the shower. She wakes up in the middle of the night. Oh, God. And she sees a woman standing by the bed, staring at her and Sophie. She's not only standing by the bed, though. 
She is leaning over them. Oh, no, thank down you. Right at them. No, thank you. I agree. No, thank you. No, thank you. If I had to guess, I would say I didn't like that somebody other than the family came in. Because sometimes these things can get attached to the families. Right. And in fact, Sophie, who saw the, the head peering around the corner downstairs, she said that it looked like the woman wanted to hang out with them or oh. something. Like, she wanted to be a part of their family. Yeah. I'm wondering if the ghosts are sometimes starting to get possessive of the family. Oh. Not wanting anybody else in. Yeah. Kind of like a pet. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Them's my thoughts. (laughs) (laughs) Now, Brooke had some issues with the ghost in the shower. Because apparently the ghost would, like, wait outside while Brooke was showering. Mm. And actually... Brooke would get scratches on her back right in the shower. Like, it happened in real time. Ooh. It happened in there. And (laughs) this ghost doesn't approve of tampons, I think. Oh, okay. Fun. I mean, it's not exactly fun. It's probably really disturbing. But the family was gone for the day. They came back. All the cabinet doors in the bathroom were open, and the tampons were missing. (laughs) And they never found those tampons. That's expensive. It is expensive. <laughs> it's still all the tampons. That's just rude. I know. My guess is it was like, I don't know what this is, but it is very inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> and it took the tampons. Um, and after that, I guess the tampons were the last straw. <laughs> That's they decided they to move out. <laughs> okay. The landlord let them out of their lease early. They moved in in September. They're leaving July. It has been nine months. They have all the boxes in the house ready to be loaded into the truck. When each member of the family sees one final thing, it's not, well, I mean, for Brooke and Sophie, it's the same thing, but Tom gets his own thing. And it is a black shadow, but this time inside the house, and it is moving among the boxes Mm. faster than humans could go. Mm. He's like, oh, God, oh, God, it's the final thing. Okay. And then they load up all the boxes. They pour salt into their hands and go single file out the mudroom door so one will step out throw salt one will step out throw salt step out throw salt then before they get into the truck they each get their big containers of salt and they go around the house clockwise as opposed to the other creatures who would go counterclockwise and they salted like the outside of the house including the doorways and the windows and they did it they didn't just say okay you handle this section you handle this section they all went around in a single file line again making sure that like there's no holes in the salt line oh wow yes they didn't want these ghosts following them no i think that was yeah they didn't want these things following them at all and so tom went and got the truck and brooke and sophie were staring one final time into the window do you remember that white kind of ethereal thing I mentioned? Mm-hmm. It came up then in the window while they were looking at it. But it wasn't an orb anymore. It turned into, like, the shape kind of of a person. Oh. It was taller. And it was moving around the window like it was angry, like it was trapped, <sighs> like it didn't want them to leave. Jesus. Brooke and Sophie got in the truck. Uh-huh. They left. And they say they're never going to come back to Poplar Hill. I can imagine. I can imagine, too. (sighs) So, after they left, this is, like, really the first account, I think, of something like this that happened. Because, you know, a lot of people would come in and stay for a few months and leave, Mm -hmm. reportedly because of the cold. Not exactly sure. But I feel like if they experienced these things, I'm sure other people did, too. And, you know, they eventually learned a lot of the history of the house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Tom put it into that Bitter Southerner article. There is one other tale I saw about the house. It was this very small thing. So fun fact for people who like learning local lore, Mm -hmm. if there is like a, even like a small video on YouTube or something about a local haunted location, people who live there love to talk about it. So go to the comment section because people will be like, here's what I experienced or here's Mm -hmm. what I know about it. I find all sorts of things on TripAdvisor, believe it or not. I tried to look at TripAdvisor, but it was all just about the tour specifically. Though people did shout out. They called it Old Poplar, so I wonder if they call it Old Poplar on the tour or if maybe locals call it Old Poplar. I'm not sure. But 
A commenter on YouTube named Ian said that he had been family friends in the 1980s with a group who lived in the house for a while. He said that he was 10 at the time and he was friends with two of the daughters who were also around that age. And nobody else in the family said it was haunted, but the daughters were like, it's haunted. Mm -hmm. And I think kids are a bit more intuitive about these things. And honest. (laughs) And honest. So one sign is that the family had two cats that refused to enter the house. Oh. They wouldn't go in. And then one time he was over there. They were downstairs. And they heard a voice from upstairs. And it called out the girl's mom's name. And they went to check. And no one was up there. And he also said that the upstairs was always freezing. Oh, wow. No matter how high the heater was on. Right. So, if you are in Hillsboro, North Carolina, you can go on the Haunted Hillsboro tour, and they take you not inside the house, because it is privately owned. Right. But you can go buy and see, you can buy, go buy the house, um, and you'll be told stories about it, including a lot of the stories that I told you. And um, as of 2019, nobody lived there. Neighbors say that there was a family or a couple who lived there for a while after Tom and Brooke moved out, but that they didn't last six months. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody lives there right now, so just so you know, this is private property. Don't go messing with private property. Yeah. Yeah. But thank you for listening to today's episode. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. I hope that by talking about it, I can sleep with the light off tonight. (laughs) If you liked today's episode, please like, subscribe, review, and tell a friendo. Word of mouth and reviews are the best way to let people know about your favorite podcasts. Yes. And if you want to see Robin's show notes, her blog, and her sources, please check out hauntedhospitality.wordpress.com and you'll see all of that info there. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have your own spooky story, whether it be true crime, paranormal, mystery, anything that happened to you or in the area you grew up, please write your submissions to huntedhospitalitypodcast at gmail.com. And if we can collect enough, we'll do a spooky submissions episode. If you are in the Twitter sphere, you can find us at Haunted Hosts and on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Haunted Hospitality. Yes. We would love to see you there. Yes. Stay Stay spooky. spooky.